thanks for staying with us now on national merry music day we're celebrating the meriton sound system as the oldest sound system on the planet meriton is the only sound system founded in the original sound system era of the 1940s and 1950s that is the um, that is still in operation and as the last standing meriton music encourages music lovers around the globe to learn about the historical movement it has influenced musical genres in Jamaica and the world in general. So, who is a music lover? And who understands what maritons are? What's I was it? just going to ask you <laughs> that, what is it? Because when, uh, when you said Jamaica, I was like, is it reggae? Or yeah. what is... So, like, <laughs> you're going to research. Like a, well, now, new knowledge. We have to go and find out. <laughs> but, I'm going to research. Well, happy music day, though. <laughs> Happy Merry, Merry Music, Music Day. Day, whatever that means. <laughs> All right, Angel, let me come to you. What did you find for us in the news? Oh, well, in the news, um, there's been some major, you know, concerns on um, security and terror attacks in Abuja. So um, I read the Department of State Services has asked Nigerians to remain calm but vigilant following the security alert issued by the United States Embassy in Abuja that there could be a possible terror attack in, in the city this week. The DSS, in a statement made by Dr. Peter Afwanya, um, advised Nigerians to be cautious. To be cautious. Um, the service, however, assured that it will work with other security agencies to maintain the peace in in Abuja so that is the it's a I don't even know how to put it it's um, I can imagine how the residents of Abuja are currently feeling you know not knowing where to go you know you're told to stay out of public places hotels parks and these are things or uh, activities that Abuja people are known for you know being out you know having picnics and all that so I can imagine how frightful and you know mm. this must sound to a whole lot of people knowing that they can't even go into church on sunday and the rest is that everybody is at risk it's sad mm. though i mean so it's um you know when this thing came out i was like actually this is the state we live in every day it's just whether somebody brings it to the forefront of your mind and says beware yeah um, but in truth, the state of insecurity that we're at right now, well, this is, this, in my mind, this is the state. This is it. Um, I think that it's important how this information is disseminated because I think this started from an internal communique um, yeah. from an embassy, I believe. And then, of course, that sort of, with social media and technology today, you can spread it far and wide very quickly. Um, and that in itself can cause panic. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's almost you almost want to ask yourself the question is information too much is it too little what is the balance because now everybody's in this heightened state and this is not the first time it's happened it's happened before so everybody's in this heightened state um it's, so it's like a heightened of an already heightened state so you're mm. taking it to an exponential level but really where are we today this is our reality sad yeah, sad sad, sad reality. reality absolutely mm. All right, it's your story. Well, I wish that my story was more upbeat, but <laughs> it's not. Um, my headline reads, Panic as petrols, um, Petrol Shortage Emerges in Lagos. So, of course, as has become almost the norm every few months now, we end up with a petrol shortage. or We wake up and they're queues. Let mm. me not even say we end up with a petrol shortage. We wake up and they're queues. And the explanation is the same. Um, I think so the last time this happened was what, June, July. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was the same thing. The cost for the marketers to lift the petrol um, didn't make the pump price viable. So we've circled back to that conversation again, where they're now saying that the price they're lifting at is about 175 to 185 naira per litre, which of course still requires, I think it's an additional 10 naira, I think on top of that, to get it to the pump. Um, so by the time you do the math, they're now saying again that it's not economically viable for them to sell at a loss. Hence, we are in deja vu mode where we see the long queues and everybody searching for PMS. It, we then circle back to the conversation about whether we're scrapping the subsidy, how viable is the subsidy. Again, we've said it many times on the show, 
the subsidy is just not sustainable. I mean, diesel has found its level, right? Seven or eight hundred or so naira for a liter of diesel, and we've all adjusted as best as we can, mm -hmm. right? Businesses' prices have gone up. Our inflation, all the usual commodities have all gone up. So let's let's at some, let's take the decision. Do it with petrol, and. Let's, it's like yanking off the band-aid because we can't continue like this now. Every few months, so we'll probably come back now and then they'll up, they'll up it by maybe 20 naira or something. Mm. And then we'll be still here again. So it's just a little frustrating, stressful. And if you have petrol, then you're stuck in traffic burning the little petrol that you have. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then when you don't have petrol, then you have to spend <laughs> the hours and the time to go and queue for the petrol or buy it. I mean, black market rate is... In fact, uh, I, I'm so pained because, I, you know, I had the back-to-back -back from mm. Thursday all the way to Sunday. So your tank Sunday is from empty. Sunday, I went all, um, straight from production. I went to Ogun State out of town. By the time I, I we were leaving, right, when we got back the to queues. Lagos yesterday, I just saw queues. And I asked the person driving, I said, why didn't you tell me there was this? Thing? Would have, yeah, that there was, we, saw, we saw a few tanks. Yeah. So right now, my car is on, is on reserve. So I don't even know what I'm going to do because I can't even drive inside traffic. I have to just manage myself until I'm able to find somewhere I can get fuel from. Like, it doesn't make any sense. This thing just keeps... Can we not just find a permanent solution to this? Like you rightly said, we've said these things over and over again. It seems like we're just going round in circles. Around Let's, circles. if we want to remove the subsidy, let us all remove the subsidy. Let us know what our reality is. You know, I suppose just, you know, patching and patching and every time you wake up and it's just so sudden. Because yeah. it's not like there was any warning or anything, Nothing. you know, and it's so painful. And, and the thing is like, why does it have to? So the thing is, if, you know, even if you're trying to manage our current situation, if you even want to stagger it to say, you know what, if it's every quarter, if it's every half year, before the marketers come and hold us to ransom, let's increase it a little mm -hmm. bit so that you make that adjustment process yeah. gradual. So you don't just go from, you know, what from happened with diesel. Yeah. Exactly. But at this point, we're not even getting feedback. We're not getting, and we're just going through all this stress and what. And there's already too much happening in the country. You right know? Moment. Like, there's just uh -huh. too much. <sighs> so, oh. Abuja people are probably looking at us like, what are you guys talking about? Because, <laughs> of course, well. they had the extended fuel scarcity, yeah. and then the floods in Kogi yeah. and all prevented the trucks from even being able to get to them. So, Abuja's yeah. situation is even then compounded. It's worse, yeah. All right, so Peter Obi, the presidential candidate for the Labour Party, has said that women are more committed and trustworthy to work with. I 100% agree with you. <laughs> he wrote that he had about 40% of women in his cabinet in Anambra State because he found that, that uh, women were more, far more committed and trustworthy when you need work to be done and done satisfactorily, right? Get a woman to do it and you, you will not be disappointed. So he then went on to say that he was committed to making sure that he will carry women along, bring them to the leadership table where decisions have been made, and also allowing them to utilize the potential for the betterment of Nigeria. And uh, you know, the reason I'm taking this story is because this this weekend, all my project has been on women, women, women. <laughs> Why are you looking at me with kind of eye? <laughs> but hey, I I I hundred percent agree with him because again, I mean, when I was done, like the attention to detailing that a woman would put into something is completely different from what a man would do, right? Um, I remember so many people saying that, oh my God, this is so big, this is huge, this is this, you know, and all of that. I kept thinking to myself, if possible, maybe if it's possible that they had given this project to a man to handle. I don't think the attention to details, so if, if I can give myself the flowers, <laughs> the attention to details would not have been that, you know, because everything was thought, we, 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 we thought everything through, right? Um, so I, and I, I tend to agree with people that say that let's give more women the opportunity because again, um, that nature that we have naturally with, within us as Not women, thing. you know, we want to see things blossom, right? So if we start to have these kinds of conversations, on the table where people are saying you know what let's bring in more women into this conversation i am very 100 percent sure that nigeria will be far far better than where we were before you know now uti you do not have any comment <laughs> no i don't <laughs> why, are you, why are you looking at me with corner eye no but i mean hey, he hasn't, said, he hasn't women. said anything yeah. that we don't yeah. already know so that's what i was trying to say that yeah. i was trying to sort of understand what the comment, but of course, when you start talking about the women in his cabinet and all of that, we already know now. Mm. Women run things. We run the world. Mm. All right, so on that note, let's take a break. Let's talk to ourselves. Let's see what this flooding situation is like and how we can better manage ourselves. Stay with us. We'll be right back.